I made a video a few weeks back on removing rust using molasses and in that video I made a statement I said I think maybe what's happening here is the yeast is reacting with the sugars and grabbing the oxygen from the iron oxide and that's why it removes the rust. And I thought well all right I spout off but does, is that really the case? If that was the case one could get some yeast, some sugar and some water and throw something in that's rusty and it'll clean it up in no time. So you see here what I've got is I've got a two litre container. It's got 200 grams of sugar in it. In the other container is some dregs out of the bottom of one of my kegs of beer. Uh, it'll add the yeast in and then we're going to fill it up with water. And I've got this little drill bit here and it's, you know, it's got a light coat of rust on it. But that'll be enough to see if it works. Well, here we are a week later. Yes, it's worked to some degree, but nothing like the molasses. This is um, not working efficiently. I thought, well, I'll throw that in the molasses. But then I noticed that somebody else had a video up on using potatoes to get rid of rust. I said, well, I've got plenty of time. I'm not going to use this drill bit for a while. So I'll stick it in with some potatoes. So I filled up the same container after I rinsed it out with some water, chopped up some potatoes and threw them in. And here we are a week later. It's done something, but yeah, it's still pretty slow. Now compare that to this one over here. I have a barbecue which I hang on my old spit and I can raise and lower it. You know what it's like when you're trying to cook a perfect steak. You do one side, you turn it over and the fire's dropped down. Not much heat left in it anymore. So I thought, well, if I hang my grill on my spit, which I can raise and lower, I can follow the fire down. And I was patting myself on the back and thinking that was pretty clever. And then I was watching an old 1940s John Wayne movie and him and some hombre were out in the bush. There they were cooking dinner. Big John walks over to the fire. He drops the, uh, the chain that the grill's hanging off down a link, does the same thing as mine. Well, I didn't invent anything there, did I? Anyway, the problem I have with this uh, raising and lowering caper is every winter, the chain seems to rust up because it doesn't get much use. And so the first time I use it, I spend about an hour cleaning it up so I can uh, get it to interact with the uh, sprocket. So I said, I'll give this molasses caper a go with this chain. Well, look at this. This is a week later. The molasses has penetrated in between the links of the bush roller chain. It's not a bike chain, really, but it's penetrated in there, and you can see it's swinging around free and limp. It's um, really done the job. I'm going to do the other, other chain next. So uh, if you're going to clean some rust up with anything, my suggestion is, unless you want to pay big bucks for some proprietary rust remover, molasses is the winner. Well, there's my drill bit after three days in the molasses. How good is that? Apparently, molasses contains a chelating agent. That's why it attacks the uh, iron in the oxide, and that's why it works so well. Thanks for watching.